Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promo rate for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Today on CityCast Boise. We're surrounded by gorgeous hiking trails with some of the best spots only minutes from downtown. But for beginners, getting into hiking can be intimidating. So Colton Gerhart with the Boise Trails Challenge is joining us to share his recommendations for everyone, from beginners to more adventurous hikers. Plus, he shares his insider tips on getting those killer views. It's Tuesday, July 30th. I'm Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. Thanks for joining me, Colton. Thanks for having me. So I just really want to jump in really quickly. Where can you go if you're interested in exploring the outdoors? But I always like to say I'm lightly outdoorsy. So maybe like a trail that's really light or something that isn't going to be too difficult. Totally. So we're actually so lucky to live where we do. I feel like we have a really great range of trails in our network here. My first trail that I ever did in Boise was behind Camel's Back in the Holes Gulch area. Mm -hmm. And it is a super trail to do this time of year, especially because it is so hot. And in, there's a lot of trees behind there too. It's really accessible. There's a lot of parking at Camel's Back. And then going up behind there, you can kind of build your own adventure from there. If you want a longer hike, you can keep going. Um, if you want a shorter hike, there's plenty of loops um, right in that that camel's back area. So just off the bat, because I'm really not an experienced hiker, when you say like a shorter loop or a longer loop, what kind of a time frame is that generally? Yeah. So when it comes to like a short or a long loop, as we know, we live in the foothills. So there's some elevation mm -hmm. with that. And the camel's back area, for one, I'll use that as my example. You could do a half hour hike if you wanted to. Um, you could go up to an hour um, as well. And that would range anywhere from a mile to three miles, depending on how much time you have and how much of a hike you really want to get in. And what are some of your tips for newbies or maybe people who are new to hiking in this area if they want to get started on the trails? So Ridge to Rivers does a really good job of posting a lot of signs and trail maps throughout the trail network here at Camel's Back, Military Reserve, a lot of the main hiking areas that are close to town. You can find these trail maps and you can take a picture of them with your phone. Um, you can also access Ridge to Rivers website and get an interactive map from them, which can be really handy as well. I think the biggest tip that I have for people is to Bring more water than you think you're going to need. Mm -hmm. um, right now, a lot of the creeks are pretty dry, depending on where you go. So they can be used to cool off. But when it's been 100 degrees for a few days now, it's really tricky to find that water, depending on where you are. So I would say make sure that you have a backup plan, a map, and a route to kind of figure out where you want to go. On those trail maps, too, they have kind of the distance. So depending if you want to do a half a mile or three miles, you can kind of map together a nice loop from those maps. And what are some of your hike recommendations for families? If you want to bring some of your kids hiking with you or, you know, just make it kind of a family adventure, what's a really good trail? So there is this really fun trail, I'll classify it as, called Elephant Rock. It's right in Military Reserve, right off of the road there. And if you take your family back there, there is a rock that is, it's encouraged for kids to play on the rock. And I think it's supposed to kind of look like an elephant. Uh, so that's kind of fun too for kids. And then actually, again, right behind Camel's Back Park, there is a fenced off area where there are some I'm going to use the word cliffs, but they're not like scary cliffs. It's like kids are going up in the sand and kind of playing around on that little hillside there, which is, I see a lot of kids there as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Hiking with kids, it's always good. You got to have some kind of a destination or something you tell them that you're going to. So those are some really good recommendations. And snacks. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like all the trail mix, they can pick out all the M&Ms. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, Colton. What are some maybe more challenging but not too intense trails? Maybe like an intermediate hike. Totally. So 
a general rule that I like to follow when I'm recommending trails for people is the lower foothills. They're a little bit easier depending on where you go. And then as you start to make your way up towards Bogus Basin, they get a little bit more challenging. So the middle trails between town and Bogus Basin are the ones that I probably recommend. I might get a lot of flack for this, but I'm going to classify Taylor Rock as an intermediate trail. Okay. I know every time I go out there, there's a lot of people doing it and it's that's amazing. It's very, very popular, but I think it's quite steep. It's not an easy trail and it's very exposed. So that one is close to town. And if you want to get some elevation in on your hike, and that's also a destination, you can head up to the cross and back. That's a good one. And then depending on the time of year, I would also recommend Watchmen and Five Mile Gulch Mm. in the springtime, like late spring, like May, depending on how wet it's been. There are uh, an abundance of wildflowers out there. And it is just incredible, incredible. And in the summertime, too, there's a lot of great views of the valley, too, up there. Oh, that sounds great. So in your opinion, what makes the difference between an easy and an intermediate hike? I would say there are a few factors that come into play. Length is definitely one of those. And then terrain and elevation. A lot of our trails here are very buffed out. They're very smooth. So they're very approachable. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you make a turn, you might find some more rocks, some boulders, some other obstacles. So you kind of have to mitigate to get around to continue going. And then there are some trails that you start climbing and you don't really stop climbing until you've gone about a thousand, two thousand feet. So we definitely have that wide range here. You talked about how a lot of our trails are kind of buffed out, but there might be some elevation and stuff. Do you think somebody doing an intermediate hike would benefit from like hiking boots, having equipment like that? Or do you think just, you know, some really sturdy tennis shoes would still be appropriate? So it depends on your level of your ability, um, what you're most comfortable with. I see people out on the trails with hiking boots and trekking poles, but also there are plenty of trails where you can go out with just a pair of tennis shoes. I personally use a lot of like trail running shoes, so they're a little bit more comfortable for me yeah. personally. And a lot of our trails are really approachable using those. As you get up closer to Bogus Basin Road, they get a little bit more rocky and potentially technical. Technical, I would say if you're interested in using hiking boots for that and trekking poles, that would be advised. Spam sucks. It clogs your email, your text messages, and is a waste of time. Did you know that spam starts with your personal data being sold? When you get online, data brokers collect information like your phone number, social security number, even your health and financial records. They sell your info to businesses, and then they use your personal info to target you. If you're sick of spam and scammers, you should check out Incogni. That's I-N-C-O-G-N-I. They scrub your info so it can't be sold. It takes just a few minutes to set up an account, and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose but spam and scammers. Protect your data, time, and sanity. Use code CITYCAST for 55% off the annual plan at incogni.com. That's I-N-C-O-G-N-I dot com. People who live in this area really want to enjoy the outdoors. That's one of the appeals of Boise, but the heat has been so intense lately. So what's maybe a good place people could go to cool down or a hike where maybe you're going to find a spot you could dip your feet in some water? Totally. So water can be really tricky to come by this time of year, for sure. The Boise River Mm -hmm. is a really great resource that we have that runs through town. Um, You might be thinking, I don't want to go for a hike on the pavement. And personally, I don't either. (laughs) Um, Luckily, there are, if you go kind of closer to Lucky Peak between downtown and Harris Ranch, Mm -hmm. on the south side of the river, there is a trail that kind of runs along it. You probably, if you've ever floated the river, you might see people hiking on that trail there. It's very flat. It's very wide, but it's a lot cooler. You can even feel the temperature drop probably five to 10 degrees from where you came from before. And then when you get to that spot there, it it really makes a difference. And there's plenty of little beaches there you can jump in. And so that one is really close to town, really accessible. Um, And if you're interested in going into the foothills a little bit more, Dry Creek. I know the name is a little tricky. <laughs> That's a misnomer. Um, it might be com- yeah, might be confusing. But that one I've found is 
one of the most reliable sources of water. If you start out on that trail, it's about two miles of can be exposed, can be a little bit more challenging. So be prepared, but um, you'll generally have a creek that is running next to you the entire time. And Colton, what should people do to make sure that they're staying safe while they're hiking on these really hot summer days? We definitely recommend that you start earlier than later. How early? How early would you say people should start? So when I say early, I think for me, it's generally around 6 o'clock, 6.30. If you're able to get up and get out the door that early in the morning, you would definitely have the benefit of it being a lot cooler. Um, It starts to get pretty warm around 10 a.m. Another benefit of that is when you are getting up in that morning there, you'll be greeted with a gorgeous sunrise too. So that can be a little bit of a reward. Another time of day would be sunset. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in getting out later after work or maybe late on the weekends, um, the sunset would be a great time too because you definitely feel that the coolness set in a little bit after the sun has gone down. And that really can make all the difference, especially in those exposed areas. Yes, absolutely. This year's Boise Trails Challenge came to an end on July 20th. And this is a competition that encourages people to complete as many local trails as they can. Were there any trails that um, just maybe really delight you or were surprising this year or just were like must-see trails? So the trails that I never get to for some reason, unless I'm doing the Boise Trails Challenge, which there are plenty of them. But um, we live a little bit closer to downtown and there's Avamore trails that are out past Eagle, um, still in the foothills. Those trails out there always surprise and delight me. I always forget how beautiful they are out there. They're nestled in that little neighborhood back there and there are some canyons and there's some cows out there too. So (laughs) if you are cow adverse, just be warned. Generally, they're pretty friendly though, but every now and then you can get a one that is a little bit more friendly. Warning of disgruntled cows. Yeah, yeah. Disgruntled. That's a great word for it. Um, But yeah, back there, it's really gorgeous. Oh, that is a great spot. Yeah, I think sometimes we really focus on the trails, you know, just outside of Boise or by Camel's Back. But that is just such a beautiful spot, even if maybe there's disgruntled cows. (laughs) Yeah. If you're a cow fan, though, it's your spot. There you go. Yeah, yeah. For everyone who's got like the cow kitchen decor, that might be your trail. There you go. (laughs) So Colton, if you're looking for a hike that's maybe really different than the trails around Boise, where do you like to go? So technically, I guess the one I'm going to recommend is still in Boise. It's okay. up on, on Bogus Basin. So it's it's almost like another world up there. It's a ski hill in the wintertime, and then in the summer it becomes this recreational mecca. There is a trail called Around the Mountain, which you would never think that you've just left this high desert city and it gives you expansive views of the sawtooth the boise range it's really stunning and then tucked back there even a little bit more it can be a little hard to get to there's this trail called mahalo and it is this lush trail that is you can make it into a loop depending on how you structure it but it is it's beautiful it's very treed I don't get out there very often. It's under snow completely in the winter time, mm-hmm. and then when it melts out, there can be a lot of flowers. It's gorgeous. Oh, that sounds amazing. Okay, so to round out our list, I want to know about the hardest trails. So what is the best trail that you recommend if somebody's really looking for a challenge? So there are two. I'll give you two. Okay. Um, and it's it has to do with length and elevation. So the first one is called Sweet Connie. It can be quite exposed. Again, you might get your cow fixed depending on the time of year with this one. Sometimes there is a creek that runs through it that can generally dry up around this time of year, mm-hmm. late July, early August. But it, you start near off of Bogus Basin Road, about six miles up from town, and you head into the foothills and you start making your way towards Stack Rock. So it's about a four to six mile hike on that trail alone. Um, And then you can tie into the stack rock trails there and kind of build a different route depending on how far you want to go. Um, You can do an out and back or you can do a car drop, anything like that. But that one, you see a a lot of different terrain. You see the high desert, you see the pines, you have the water sometimes. So that's really gorgeous. And then the other one um, 
which is not a misnomer like Dry Creek, but Hard Guy is a trail that we have (laughs) in our network here. And it is very challenging. It was one of the first trails that I did in Boise. And I was delightfully surprised with how much elevation you could gain in such a short amount of time. Depending on where you start that trail, it can be anywhere from four to six miles um, for that trail alone. But you do gain a lot of elevation. I think it's about two to 3,000 feet. And there's no real reprieve until you turn around and start heading back down again. Oh, okay. But you are rewarded again with a tree line once you get to the top too, which is always kind of fun. Those are maybe the trails where you're going to want those hiking boots. Yes, your hiking boots and plenty of water and sunscreen and all of the heat mitigating techniques that you have. Yeah, come prepared. Totally. Well, Colton, thank you so much. I think this was a great list and fantastic tips for having a really fantastic hiking experience around Boise. Thank you. Awesome. Have fun out there and be safe. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, we would love it if you would tell a friend about us. Listen tomorrow for another look at some of the most extravagant local houses. See you then.